Hello and welcome back to another video. I am so glad you're here. Today I am going to do a tier ranking list. I haven't done one of these in a while and you know it felt like it was time. So this is going to be of the Goodreads top 60 books of the last five years or that were published in the last five years. So I haven't read every last one of these. I have read a solid chunk. Additionally, I'm only going to do the top 25 because 60 is a lot of books and you know the further out we got there was just more and more that I hadn't actually read yet and I don't know I just didn't think that would be as exciting. So let's do it. Okay so the first one on here is Red, White, and Royal Blue. I read this a very long time ago way before I had a booktube or a bookstagram or whatever but I think I liked it pretty well. So I'm gonna put it in pretty good. Cause I, I mean, I do remember that I liked it, but I also feel like that was when I had first started reading like a hundred plus books a year. <laughs> like I had, you know, I probably before that I would read like 10 a year. <laughs> so I don't know if like my, my perception was skewed, although it is pretty well liked book. So who knows, but that's where it's going. Things we never got over. I haven't read it and I probably will not, uh, to be honest. I've heard it's very spicy and sad, which I'm just really not interested in. Uh, A Court of Silver Flames. I also probably will not read this one. It, you know, I read the first two books in the series of Akatar and they were fine. But I did not feel like I needed to continue the series and I know that they are so well loved and I'm so happy for you if you love that series. But I just had no desire to continue on with it. Um, Reminders of Him, I did read this and it is a hard pass from me. That book was ridiculous. I mean, I, I have a lot of opinions that you might already know on Colleen Hoover, but that was like really bad. There was so much to critique. I won't do it here though. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I loved this. I listened to the audiobook. I actually listened to the audiobook when I was in Paris with my mom a couple years ago. And I remember just like not being able to stop listening to it. So she was on Nickelodeon and I was like a teenager or in college. So I was definitely a little too old for like me to know exactly all the shows she was on and stuff but like it was a very good book and like really sad <laughs> but I would recommend it. Beach Read. Okay so here's the thing about Beach Read. I'm gonna put it under pretty good. I really really liked Beach Read the first time I read it. I literally just read it for the second time like last week. I remembered that January the main character had been dealing with her father's death and so I was like okay maybe this will be cathartic because I have been enjoying books like that recently whatever and I mean I still did like it a lot but it just didn't do for me what it did the first time and I feel the same way about that almost as red white and royal blue where it's like I had just kind of started to like read a lot <laughs> and so now I've read so many rom-coms that I'm like was this actually that good or did I just not have a lot to compare it to? So we're just gonna leave it in pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, the guest list. That was... Ugh, I don't know. I really didn't like it at all. I'm gonna put it... I'm gonna put it in... It's fine. Because, I mean, I can't... I can't say that I, like, hate it. But I definitely don't like it. And it's like... One of those books that I'm like, oh, if you've never read a thriller, then maybe you like this. But I just didn't find it intriguing. I just think Lucy Foley is not a very good author and she's not very good with coming up with storylines, but that's just me. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is going in pretty good. Another one that I read kind of a long time ago, so I can't like recall specific details, but I did, I did like it at the time. I do remember thinking it was weird because it was very clear that this was written for a British audience and then certain things were changed so it would make sense in America. And it didn't though. <laughs> things that were just like very weird that wouldn't really 
like word choices and phrasing, like things that just didn't make sense. And I mean, that's neither here nor there, but I just, something of note. It starts with us. Ooh, yeah, that's going to be a will not read. I mean, I just, I just really can't see a scenario where that becomes something that I am interested in. I guess I should have probably read the first one before I, I try to read that one, but I could just not read either. <laughs> The housemaid. So, you know, this is one that I'm embarrassed to say I loved. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed to say it. I don't believe in guilty pleasures because anything that brings you joy, you don't need to feel guilty about as long as it's not harming another person. But like, all of Freedom McFadden's books, I've talked about them. They're all just absolutely over the top, ridiculous. The writing's not very good, but Damn it if I'm not entertained. So it's going under love. Lessons in chemistry. Okay, unpopular opinion time. That's just fine for me. I know this one is like everyone's favorite of like 2022 or something. And I thought it was fine, but I don't think it really set out to accomplish what it wanted to. And I mean, I just did not find the main character to be that like inspiring feminist it felt like i was being preached to a lot and i don't know she was giving like i don't want to say manic pixie dream girl because it's not really right but it was just like she's this perfect creature who is you know standing up for all women and doing things no one's ever done before and i just like kind of didn't really buy it i don't know i don't know fourth wing i i probably won't ever read that but I kind of want to give it a chance. I'm going to put it under want to read. Why not? This is a book that, you know, a lot of the internet has loved. And, you know, I am not a fantasy girly, but I do submit to peer pressure a lot. So <laughs> um, that might be something I read someday. I do like the idea of, like, the Hunger Games mixed with How to Train Your Dragon. So... We'll see. Happy place. Hard pass. Just, just a no. I hate that book with every fiber of my being. I don't feel like I need to repeat all the reasons here because this is not about that, but I've talked about it before. I will link it up above. Leandra the TBR Zero has a great video that I feel like really breaks down all of the things that I hated about this book, just like she did. Um, and so for me, that is, that is what you need to watch to understand my opinion. She just speaks it out a lot more eloquently than I could. And yeah, great video. Also definitely subscribe to her channel. She's a, she's a gem. Got a lot of Emily Henry on here. People we meet on vacation. I have it sitting over there. I have not read it, but I, I mean, I have it sitting over there, so I guess I want to read. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess I just kind of want to like round out reading all her rom-coms because that's the only one that I haven't read. Yeah. So the next one is Book Lovers, also by Emily Henry. I did love that. I don't remember what I loved about it, but I know that I did. Um, I think that is my favorite of her books. Yeah. Yeah. I used to think it was Beach Read, but now after rereading it, I don't think it is anymore. So book lovers, although who knows if I reread that. The Silent Patient. This is another one. I read this book so long ago and I just, I'm, I've read like a hundred thrillers since then. But I'm going to say loved because it definitely surprised me. And again, I don't know if I read it now. I would have the same reaction, but I don't know. I don't know. We're just going to put it under love. Let's see. Iron Flame. I mean, I'm just gonna probably put that under will not read because to be honest, I might not even read Fourth Wing and so I wouldn't be reading the sequel without the first one. But hey, you never know. You never know. The Midnight Library. Oof. This is a hard pass. This is an another unpopular opinion, but I I seriously hated this book so much. I thought 
it was so harmful in its representation of um, depression and mental illness because it literally was just like, I mean, to me, the end, which this isn't really a spoiler or anything, but like I felt like it was basically at the end being like, see how much worse your life could be? You should just be happy and not kill yourself. And I don't know, that that rubbed me the wrong way because it's not that simple. And I feel like the people that like really, really love this book and are like, it changed my life, just maybe haven't dealt with their mental health in a negative way. Like they haven't had struggles like that because I just I just think it was a little harmful how it was presented anyways Daisy Jones and the six uh love read it a long time ago but I have no doubt that I would still love that book because it's just like I feel like people are still reading it and loving it even though it's been out for like five years or something it's still like being read by new audiences constantly and I still like see it on like bestseller tables and all of this and I'm just like I'm happy because I like that book. Malibu Rising another Taylor Jenkins read I'm gonna put this under it's fine I remember feeling like the first half of this book was amazing and then the second half I didn't like it's about these four adult children who have a big party and then like their house burns down and that's like how it opens but then we go back in time and so, like, the next section of it is a, is the history of their parents meeting and falling in love and all that. And that I really liked, but then the second half I just didn't really care about. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I loved this. I don't even know what to say about this book. I just loved it so much. And it's one of those that's, like, a synopsis doesn't do it any good and I probably don't need to give a synopsis you've probably heard of it but like it's just one of those kind of slice of life ish you're just observing these characters living their lives and I just fell in love with these characters and the story and it takes you on a ride of all different emotions and yeah it was just perfect Crescent City Ooh, that's gonna be a will not read yeah I'm just you know fantasy that's just not for me the love hypothesis. This is tough because I have no intentions of reading this. I really don't think that I would like it, but there's a possibility I would like do it in like a TikTok famous whatever video or something. I would do it for the likes. That's basically what I'm saying. Um, I would do it for the views. So you know what, for the sake of making this cuter, let's put it under want to read because then it like looks a little nicer. The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. I think I'm gonna put it in pretty good. I liked that book a lot, um, but it just didn't do anything groundbreaking. Except for it did teach me where Sausalito was. I do remember that. And the last one is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which is a love for me. I... I would like to do a reread on that one. It's so long though. It's like hard to motivate myself to like reread a super long book. That's not 112263. But whatever. So I would say that for the most part, besides not reading eight of these, I mostly agree that like with the popularity of them, I guess, there's just a few that I like really strongly disliked. So I think that the people of Goodreads have made solid choices. I love making these tier ranking videos. I hope you enjoy watching them as well. If you want me to do more like this, definitely leave it in the comments what you'd like to see me tier rank next. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!